There have been people sick this morning. Naomi, she called me. She said she's not going to make it to church tonight because she's sick. So whatever is going around, y'all can just keep it. Amen. Pray for those that are sick. God, God will keep his hand upon them. Brother Saul got called into CQ. Surprise. Right? So all kinds of crazy things are going on. But we're here tonight to receive a blessing from God. Brother Ron, come help us receive the offering. Let's give unto the Lord. May God bless you as you give unto him. The offering go to meet the needs of the work of the Lord here. You give and God will bless you. And you know what? Especially as we are fixing this basement over there after the flood. All right, so praise God for that. It's kind of in a state of disarray, but we got to fix all that. So you give, and God will bless you. Brother Ron, sir, please pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to give unto you. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings we've seen from you already. We ask you, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver according to your word. Jesus' precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving. God bless you for it. And he will because that's the kind of God that we serve. And at this time, Reverend Myers is coming to preach to us tonight. Let's just enter our in, open up our hearts and our minds. How many came to get a blessing? Amen. Right? And it's up to you to get the blessing that you need from God tonight. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house. Amen? It's been a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Now we can receive something again from God tonight. Tonight, I'd like to direct your attention to the book of Luke, chapter 4, and we'll be reading verses 38 through 41. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And directing your attention back to verse 40 for a text tonight, he said, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach the thought or title of a message, He's More Than Enough. Pastor, sir, would you please pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you right now with a heart full of thanksgiving and gladness. We ask you now, God, to bless our admirers as you preach that. Amen. Have you ever been somewhere where they have perhaps, some of you know me, a delicious piece of cake or a delicious piece of pie or perhaps your favorite food? Uh, maybe you're at a buffet or you're at a restaurant. Uh, maybe someone made some awesome cookies that you love and, and you're perhaps at a barbecue and you're in line to get some, uh, hoping perhaps that there's still some there by the time you get to that spot hoping it is all gone and you're able to get some. Perhaps you're waiting impatiently, looking around, perhaps on the people's shoulders. How many people are, are getting a piece of that, a, a piece of that food? How many have, have, got, have gotten a piece of pie? Keeping your eye on the prize that waits up just ahead. And when you get there, perhaps you find that there isn't any left. It's the, maybe there's nothing left in all of it. You've waited, but there's just nothing. What, so what do you do? 
What is your response? Perhaps it's, man, I should have been here earlier. Perhaps uh, I should have uh, uh, gotten in line sooner. I, I should have been the first one in line. Uh, 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 all of a sudden, uh, they don't have what I have need of. But you see here tonight, uh, we see that Jesus, uh, he's more than enough. Uh, he's more than enough. Uh, he was able to heal everybody. He was able to touch uh, every single person that came. Uh, it didn't matter what part of the line they were in. Uh, when they got to Jesus, uh, Jesus healed them. Uh, Jesus was more than enough uh, for each and every one of us when we come unto him. Here we see Jesus entering into Simon Peter's house where his wife's mother was sick with a fever. How Jesus would rebuke this fever and immediately left her. Before this, he had come to Capernaum, a, a city, and into the synagogue uh, where he would uh, cast out a devil. And, and so, uh, no doubt, the response of the people of the city uh, as they saw these miracles was one, perhaps, uh, of amazement uh, and one uh, of man. Uh, look what Jesus has done. Uh, uh, and perhaps uh, in her mind, uh, I got to get to Jesus. Uh, maybe there's not enough time for me uh, to receive what I have need of. They brought everybody. The Bible tells us that when the sun was setting, that they all that they had uh, that was sick with diversities, they brought them to Jesus. It didn't matter the disease. It didn't matter how bad things were going on in their life. Uh, we find that all manner of sicknesses and diseases uh, were brought unto Jesus. Uh, if they were sick, uh, they were brought there. If they had a fever, uh, if they were perhaps as we begin to read throughout the Gospels, how what? Uh, Jesus healed the lepers, uh, or Jesus healed the lame, uh, or those who were deaf, and those uh, who had uh, uh, plagues and palsies and different things. Uh, it did not matter. It did not matter the disease. They had to get to Jesus. They had to get to Jesus. They needed a touch in their lives. And, and if Jesus could do it for those before that they had saw, uh, surely he can do it for me. Uh, it's tonight. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what no sin. Uh, there's no sin tonight. Uh, that's too big for God. Uh, there's no uh, a problem. Uh, that's too big for God. Uh, there's nothing too great. Uh, nothing too bad. Uh, when we get to Jesus, uh, Jesus is able to heal us. Uh, Jesus is able to touch us. Uh, Jesus is able to move on our life. Uh, he's able to meet our very need. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, he said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us, uh, we were born into the world. Uh, we were born shaped in iniquity, uh, and we were cursed. Uh, that, that, that sin of curse was upon us, uh, and yet uh, God died for us. God cared about us. Uh, the sin is not too great. Uh, their problem is not too great. Uh, your past is not too great. Uh, God is able to forgive you. Uh, God is able to meet your need. And many times, though, people, they'll get caught up in all the details how much I've sinned or the certain sins I've committed. Uh, and surely uh, God, uh, God won't forgive me. God, uh, God doesn't care about me. Uh, you see tonight though, you need to let that go. It doesn't matter what you may have done. Uh, it doesn't matter what you may have, uh, what may have happened in your past. Uh, come to Jesus. Uh, allow Jesus uh, to be your burden bearer. In Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30, he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we have a problem going on in our life, if we have sin in our life, come to Jesus. Don't wait. Don't stop and think, oh, my problem is too big. No, I got to get to Jesus. I have a need in my life. I need Jesus to do something for me. It didn't matter what disease, it was everybody. Everybody came unto him. Notice, it didn't matter the time of day. He said, now when the sun was setting, so the sun's going down. It's late. Everybody's perhaps getting ready for bed. Everyone's getting ready to, to shut it all down. But the people still had a need. 
For them, uh, perhaps uh, they didn't know that Jesus was going to leave the next day, uh, or whatever the case may be. Uh, all they know is uh, they saw the miracle and said, I got to get to Jesus. For them, it was their one chance uh, to get their needs met. Uh, what did they have to lose? Uh, what did they have to lose to come into Jesus? Uh, but time itself, uh, why go another day? Why go another hour in the condition that they were in? Uh, no, I got to get to Jesus right now. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. It doesn't matter where you're at. As Pastor was talking about this morning, uh, God can meet your very need. Uh, it could be in the very barracks. Uh, it could be on the road. Uh, it could be in an altar. It does not matter. It could be at midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning. But when we call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible tells us that it's you shall be saved. So we just got to call. We got to get to Jesus and say, God, I have a need in my life. God, I need you to touch me. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to wait for the altar call. You don't have to wait for the church service. You don't have to wait for Tuesday night Bible study, Thursday night church, Sunday morning service, or Sunday night service. I got a need, God. I'm coming to you with my need. And God will be there. He was there. Jesus was there to meet them and to meet their needs. And God will be there to answer and meet the need in your life. And we notice he laid his hands on every one of them, on every single one. It did not matter because he loved. He loved the people and he loves us tonight. He loves and cares about the lives of men and women. In Mark chapter 6 and verse 34, and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. You see, when we were in sin, we were in sin. We were lost and on our way, we on our way to hell. We were lost. We didn't have no guidance. We didn't have no shepherd. We didn't have no one there to help us and to protect us and to guide us. No, we were lost and on our way to hell. The enemy was out to destroy us as a roaring lion seeking whom he made a devour and so the devil was out to destroy us but Jesus loved us Jesus cared about us Jesus came to die for the sins of the entire world he came loving people and wanted to help people you see he wants to help people in Luke chapter 7 verses 13 through 15 and when the Lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not he came and touched the beer, and they that stood, and they that bare him stood still. He said, "Young man, I say unto thee, arise." And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Jesus, he wanted to help this woman. He showed compassion, and tonight God is here, and He loves us, and He cares about us, and He's shown us mercy. He's showing us grace. He's showing us compassion when we didn't deserve it, when we didn't have any uh, uh, um, anything to credit ourselves to it. He still loved us. And he cares about you personally. You're not just another name on the wall. You're not just another name in the book. You're just not another name on the phone, so to speak, in a Samsung phone or an iPhone. No, you're someone personal that Jesus wants to have a relationship with, that cares about your life, that wants you to be blessed, that wants you to have the blessings and promises of Almighty God. You see, he died for you on the cross. He went to hell in your place, in each and every one of our places. Uh, he died. He cared for you. John 3, 16, perhaps uh, the most uh, uh, well-known scripture. Uh, uh, for what? For God so loved the world. Uh, he loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, he said that whosoever believed in him should not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, Jesus loved you so much. Uh, he died on the cross for each and every one of us. He loves us. He gives us opportunities to make things right, allows us uh, to, make, to make it in this house. Uh, it's not a coincidence that we're here tonight, uh, but it's the because of the love of Almighty God uh, that we're able to hear the gospel message uh, that Jesus saves, uh, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus, uh, he cares about you tonight. You see, Jesus, 
He showed us mercy and showed grace. He could have said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to heal these people. You know what? Slate, go home. I don't have time. I, I got to get some sleep. I got to get up at, at 06 in the morning so I can uh, uh, start going to where I need to go next. But no, he didn't do that, did he? But rather, he was showing mercy and grace. Uh, he was helping, loving people when we didn't deserve salvation. Uh, Jesus died for our sins. Uh, that grace is that what? That unmerited favor. We didn't deserve the love of God. We didn't deserve the salvation that he so freely gives. Uh, but yet God loves us and God shows us grace tonight. Amen. We, when we were disobedient, we were full of pride, self-will, doing what we wanted to do. Doing how, living how we wanted to live, but yet God was merciful to us. God sent someone our way and said, hey, I love you. Uh, I, hey, uh, perhaps it was just a simple invitation. Or, or perhaps someone just said uh, something that, that triggered in your mind uh, that Jesus loves you. That, that Jesus cares about you. Uh, that Jesus uh, wants to do something in your life. He gives us chance after chance. He gives us opportunity after opportunity. But will we take that opportunity? He gave us a chance to be set free. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, uh, he said, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, God loved us so much, uh, he gave us an opportunity because Jesus died in our place. Uh, he went to hell in our place. Uh, he took our place. He took our sins, uh, and uh, he removed them from us, that we might be saved, and we might be washed and white, made as white as snow. And then the Bible tells us that he healed them. He healed them. He laid his hands on every one of them. He saw each and every one of them. And then he healed them. There was no one disqualified. There was no one uh, who didn't uh, get their healing. But every single person that came to him, they were healed. Every single person that comes to Jesus, you see tonight, it's a whosoever gospel. It isn't a specific uh, a group of people. It's not as a specific uh, a denomination, uh, but it's a whosoever cometh or calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, it's a whosoever that gets God. Just decides, you know what? Uh, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. Uh, I'm not going to hold back. Uh, I'm not going to hold on to the things of this world. Uh, I'm not going to hold on to my sins any longer. But God, uh, I need you to heal me. Uh, God, I need you to touch me. You see... No one was disqualified. All they had to do was show up. All they had to do was come to Jesus. And that's all we have to do tonight is come believing on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Come believing in faith. They came in faith knowing that, man, if Jesus did it for those others, surely he could do it for me. But do you have faith tonight? Do you believe on the Lord Jesus? Or do you have lack faith and say, you know what? My problem is just too big. My sin's too great. God can't heal. God can't forgive me. God can't heal me. Yes, he can. You got to start speaking in faith. You got to start believing in faith and say, you know what? I believe I'm getting my blessing tonight. You see, God's power, it doesn't run out. The world, the world's power and the world's ideas and the world's strength, it may run out, but God's power doesn't run out. He didn't quit. He didn't stop. He didn't say that the, the last five people that came to him didn't receive their blessing. No, every single person got what they had in need of because God was able and God is able to do it tonight to heal people. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get uh, uh Tired of us coming to him. We may feel like we mess up every single day. Uh, I seemingly mess up every, all the time. Uh, but God doesn't get tired. God says, I know, uh, but I still love you. Uh, it's time to get up. Uh, it's time to turn around. It's time to forsake. Uh, leaving those things right behind. Uh, he said, press toward the mark. Uh, I got to press forward. Uh, I got to get my eyes on Jesus. Uh, allow Jesus uh, to be my Lord and my Savior. Uh, allow Jesus uh, to do a miracle in my life. He's more than enough. Tonight, is he more than enough for you? With every head bowed and eyes closed in reverence to the Lord.